before any dismantling, drain the fuel oil from the fuel oil high pressure pipes. Confirm that the oil flow has stopped before continuing. The fuel oil high pressure pipe may be provided with a protective outer pipe or with flexible steel wire braided hoses. See Instruction Book, Volume 2, Chapters 901 and 909. Using a hook spanner, loosen the union nut. Using a spanner, loosen the coupling pieces fitted on each end of the high pressure pipe. Remove the high pressure pipe. Take care not to damage the high pressure pipe seatings. Disconnect the return oil pipe from the fuel valve. Mount protective plastic plugs in or on all high pressure seatings. Unscrew the retaining nuts and remove the spring housings. Remove the fuel valve from the cylinder cover using the lifting tool if the valve sticks. Thoroughly clean the fuel valve bore in the cylinder cover. Clean off any carbon deposits in the fuel valve bore with a carbon cutter. If marks are found on the seating in the bore, recondition the seating with a seating face cutter. Finally, Grind the seating with a grinding mandrel and a grinding compound, for example carborundum number 200. After milling and grinding, thoroughly clean the bore and seating and check again that there are no signs of damage on the seating. After reconditioning the seating in the bore, and thoroughly cleaning both bore and seating. Fit new O-rings on a new or overhaul fuel valve which has just been pressure tested and lubricate with molybdenum disulfide. Carefully mount the valve in the cylinder cover. To ensure that over tightening has not taken place Check that the locking and indicating pins have not been bent or broken off. In the event of over tightening, mount a new spring housing. We recommend that the calibration of new and especially old spring housings be checked before they are mounted on the engine or on the fuel valve test rig. Mount the spring housings and retaining nuts. Tighten the nuts until the top face of the pressure disc is flush with the top face of the spring housing. Reconnect the return oil pipe to the fuel valve. Check that there are no marks on the seating surfaces of the fuel oil high pressure pipe. If necessary, recondition the seatings as described in procedure number 909. On fuel oil high pressure pipes which are provided with a steel armoured protective hose, also check distance D, that is between the thrust bushing and the pipe end. See procedure number 909. Clean the threads and replace the O-rings. 
Coat the threads with molybdenum disulfide. Mount the fuel oil high pressure pipe. Adjust the torque spanner to the value indicated in procedure number 901. Tighten the coupling pieces using the torque spanner. Using the hook spanner, tighten the union nut. Close the fuel oil drain valve. Turn on the fuel oil supply. Slide type fuel valves which have been in service on the engine must be disassembled and cleaned before pressure testing as otherwise the results of the pressure testing will be inaccurate. Pay particular attention to the cleaning of the cutoff slide and the nozzle. When overhauling fuel valves, handle all parts with care and keep them clean. Careful handling applies particularly to the spindle guide and cutoff slide, as any rough handling of these components may cause them to malfunction. Do not clean the fuel nozzle with a rotating steel brush, as this may damage the spray holes. If cleaning with diesel oil or the like is insufficient, use emery paper to clean the spray holes. Using the special tool, set up the fuel valve on the plane of a drilling machine. Before disassembling the fuel valve, measure distance A, as this measurement is used later during reassembling. Mount the special tool to protect the fuel valve nozzle. Press down the handle of the drilling machine to compress the spring of the thrust spindle. This will relieve the pressure on the threads of the union nut and thereby prevent seizure. Using a hook spanner, loosen the union nut. Remove the sealing rings from the valve head and valve housing. Remove the non-return valve, thrust spindle and spindle guide. Remove and discard all sealing rings. Clean all parts in gas oil and wipe them dry with clean non-fluffy rags. Examine all seating surfaces of the valve head, thrust spindle and valve housing. If necessary, grind the seating surfaces with the grinding mandrels and carborundum number 500. Use the milling tool if more serious damage has occurred on the seating surface for the fuel oil high pressure pipe. Loosen the screw and press the spindle and stop ring downwards. Then re-tighten the screw. The diameter of the seating surface must not exceed the value stated in procedure 909-6 stroke in volume 2 of the instruction book.
After grinding and milling, clean the parts in gas oil and wipe them dry with clean, non-fluffy rags. The non-return valve and spindle guide should be sent to an MAN B&W diesel service centre or authorised repair shop for overhaul. If this is not possible, the parts may be overhauled as described in the next sequence in this film. Set up the spindle guide in a bench vise provided with soft jaws and disassemble the spindle guide with a brass mandrel and a hammer. Do not attempt to remove the fuel nozzle before the spindle guide has been disassembled as such action may damage the cutoff slide. The thrust piece, spindle and spindle guide are matched parts and therefore must not be replaced individually. To keep the matched parts together, disassemble only one spindle guide at a time. Dismount the fuel nozzle using the pulling tool. Disassemble the non-return valve using the special tool. The thrust piece, vent slide and housing are matched parts and therefore must not be replaced individually. To keep the matched parts together, disassemble only one non-return valve at a time. Carefully clean all parts and wipe them dry with clean, non-fluffy rags. Examine all seats and sliding surfaces through a magnifying glass with an 8 to 10 times magnification. Use an inspection lamp when inspecting the internal surfaces. Set up the parts in a lathe and remove any deposits or very fine scratches with a polishing linen grade 360 and oil. Under no circumstances use a coarser polishing linen. Under no circumstances must the sliding surface of the cutoff slide be polished. After polishing, clean and inspect the surfaces once again. If there are pressing in marks or other anomalies, the spindle guide or non-return valve must be discarded. Pay special attention to the condition of the edge of the cutoff slide. Clean the central bore with a brass brush to remove any carbon deposits. Clean the spray holes with the special drills. Be very careful not to push the drill too far into the spray holes as this would damage the internal surface of the fuel nozzle. Carefully clean the nozzle and wipe it dry with clean, non-fluffy rags. Test the spray holes with a test pin. If the test pin can be inserted into just one of the holes or if the holes have become oval in shape Discard the fuel nozzle. We recommend that the fuel nozzle be discarded at each spindle guide overhaul. However, if the spray holes are in order, the fuel nozzle may be reinstalled. Before reassembling the spindle guide, check that the cutoff slide moves freely inside the nozzle. Lubricate the spindle guide parts with molybdenum disulfide or oil. Loosely assemble the thrust piece, spindle and spindle guide and carefully tap the parts together with a soft hammer. Mm -hmm. 
check that the slide is able to move freely inside the spindle guide. Lubricate and mount the fuel nozzle. Ensure that the scratch marks on the spindle guide and on the nozzle flange match up and that the spring pin engages correctly in the groove in the flange of the nozzle. Be very careful when fitting nozzles of an older design with a machined face on the flange as such nozzles may inadvertently be turned 180 degrees which would seriously affect the cylinder condition and combustion process. Place the parts on the plane of a drilling machine and mount the special tool. Then press the parts firmly together. Check once again that the cutoff slide is able to move freely. Protect and handle the spindle guide very carefully, as any rough handling may cause the component to malfunction. Rub a paste-like mixture of molybdenum disulfide and mineral oil onto the sliding surfaces of the non-return valve. Remove any excessive paste and loosely assemble the parts. Place the parts on the plane of a drilling machine and mount the special tool. After ensuring that the parts are perfectly aligned, press them firmly together. If the non-return valve is not to be used immediately, cover all openings with plastic covers to prevent dirt entering them during the storage period. Slide the spindle guide carefully down into the valve housing. Make sure that the spindle guide engages correctly with the guide pin. Check that distance A corresponds to the measurement taken before the fuel valve was disassembled. Mount the thrust foot, thrust spindle parts and non-return valve. Discs added at a later time to adjust the opening pressure must be placed above the original disc. Mount a new sealing ring on the valve housing. Make sure that the guide pin is intact, then mount the valve head. Lubricate the threads of the valve head with molybdenum disulfide. Make sure that the guide pin engages correctly with the groove in the valve housing and mount the union nut. Mount new sealing rings on the valve housing and valve head and mount protective plastic plugs. Press down the handle of the drilling machine to compress the spring of the thrust spindle. This will relieve the pressure on the threads of the union nut and thereby prevent seizure. Using a hook spanner, tighten the union nut. Overhauled fuel valves or fuel valves taken from stock must be function tested before they are mounted in the cylinder cover. Slide type fuel valves which have been in service on the engine must be disassembled and cleaned before pressure testing as otherwise the results of the pressure testing will be inaccurate. Pay particular attention to the cleaning of the cutoff slide and the nozzle. The pressure testing pump is equipped with pressure gauges for displaying opening pressure, working pressure, venting function and air inlet pressure. Position the fuel valve in the test rig. 
For guidance on how to operate the pressure testing pump, refer to the supplier's special instructions. To ensure that over-tightening has not taken place, check that the locking and indicating pins have not been bent or broken off. In the event of over-tightening, mount a new spring housing. A very important element in the correct functioning of the fuel valve, both during testing and in service, is ensuring that the spring housings apply the predetermined tightening force. To ensure that this force is present, a special tool has been designed to check the calibration of the spring housings. We recommend that the calibration of new and especially old spring housings be checked before they are mounted on the engine or on the fuel valve test rig. Tighten the nuts until the top face of the pressure disc is flush with the top face of the spring housing. Connect the pressure testing pump and the return oil pipe to the fuel valve. Slowly fill the valve by pumping at low pressure until oil, without air bubbles, flows from the return oil pipe. Slowly increase the pressure until oil is emitted from the nozzle holes. First, the slide on the non-return valve will close the circulating bore whereafter oil will flow to the spindle guide. Once the opening pressure has been reached, the spindle will lift. The oil flows to the nozzle and is emitted through the nozzle holes. Due to the geometry of the internal part of the nozzle, and because the height the spindle is lifted during pressure testing is lower compared to the lifting height during normal engine operation, the fuel oil will not necessarily flow from all of the nozzle holes. Flush the valve for about five seconds, then stop the pump. First the spindle closes. The oil will stop flowing the moment the cutoff slide has covered the nozzle holes. This well defined closing of the fuel valve will minimize the fouling of the components in the combustion space. Hereafter, the slide on the non return valve moves downwards and uncovers the circulating bore. Filling up the fuel valve. Continuous operation. Slowly increase the pressure until oil is emitted from the nozzle holes. Due to the geometry of the internal part of the nozzle, and because the height the spindle is lifted during pressure testing is lower compared to the lifting height during normal engine operation, the fuel oil will not necessarily flow from all of the nozzle holes. Read the actual opening pressure on the pressure gauge marked opening pressure. 
Compare the actual opening pressure with the pressure specified in procedure number 909 and, if necessary, insert or remove discs or replace the spring. Do not insert more than five extra discs when adjusting the pressure. The fuel valve must be retested after any adjustment. Warning! Do not attempt to carry out an atomization test on slide type fuel valves as this may damage the cutoff slide and nozzle. The height the spindle lifts during pressure testing is very small compared to the lifting height when the engine is in operation. This low spindle lift height leads to an abnormally high pressure drop across the slide and, consequently, an abnormally high contact pressure between the slide and the nozzle. Furthermore, the slide oscillates at a very high frequency. These conditions, in combination with a relatively thin pressure testing oil, may lead to a seizure between the slide and the nozzle. Increase the pressure until it is about 50 bar below the actual opening pressure. There will always be a certain amount of oil flowing from the return oil pipe when the fuel valve is full of oil and pressurized. Oil must not seep from the fuel valve nozzle holes until a pressure of 50 bar below the actual opening pressure is reached. If oil does seep from the fuel valve nozzles, see procedure number 909. Lapping of the internal seatings is not acceptable. Increase the pressure to about 50 bar below the opening pressure and then move the control handle to the closed position. The pressure will gradually drop to around 15 bar where after the slide on the non-return valve will open and the pressure will drop very quickly to zero. If the quick pressure drop cannot be registered, the slide is sticking or the hole is blocked. Disassemble and examine the parts, replace if necessary. Slowly fill the valve by pumping at low pressure until oil, without air bubbles, flows from the return oil pipe. Remove the return oil pipe and block the outlet hole with a gasket and a plug screw. Increase the pressure to about 100 bar and move the control handle to the closed position. The pressure should now remain at 100 bar. If oil leaks from the union nut, replace the internal o-ring seal between the valve housing and the valve head. If oil leaks around the fuel valve nozzle, check the condition of the contact faces between the nozzle and the valve housing. After the fuel valve has passed all the tests, it can be mounted in the cylinder cover.